What's going on guys, Lyrics and I'm back bringing you today another video. This one's going to be doing my first custom tactics video of the year. Long awaited, a lot of you guys have been requesting it and here I am to deliver. First things first, you're looking at my team right now, you're probably thinking, bro, it doesn't matter what tactics you're using, you know you're going to be winning because your team's so good, blah, blah, blah. Typical, typical FIFA stuff coming from, you know, the casual guys, but um, nah. Exact same tactics I've been using on my Road to Glory team, which we got 28 wins this weekend with, I believe, 750k team, something um, thereabouts. So, um, yeah, these tactics are pretty universal. You can know you can use it with any team. And I will show you guys um, the type of players that you're going to need in like each kind of position to, you know, to have this um, tactic function properly. Right, so first thing first, before I do anything, I'm going to have to show you guys the tactics and you would have seen by the title, we are throwing it back, complete throwback. If you guys would have remembered FIFA 12, FIFA 11, them games there, bro, 4 one 2 one 2 wide was the formation, you know. Back in the day, you used to have, used to, have to purchase a position card to have your guys on maximum chemistry and 4 one 2 one 2 wide was the most expensive, you know, maxing out at like 10k, whatever the price range was back then. So as I mentioned, it's been over half a decade since this formation's been in the meta and it's for pretty obvious reasons, you know, you only got one CDM so it's a little bit, you know, susceptible defensively but the way that this meta is in FIFA 21, you're only really in danger in transition, if you know what I mean. Like it's really hard to score on someone or get scored on when your team's set up in defence and, you know, for that reason, the formation's really strong. You know, we don't really see the... The, the defensive weakness that we would normally see in, in other FIFAs and um, of course on the offensive side you know it works the same way as I said um, it's really hard to score when people are set up but you know you compare this formation to like a 4-4-2 where you only have um, you only have like four attackers in this one you have like five attackers that are actually going to get in the box and and try and score goals right so moving on to the actual tactics and um, if you would watch my tactics video from all last year they are pretty similar this year to um to last year's ones and um yeah we're starting off with a four width of course we're on balance i don't like to run the ai tactics you know for me it's too rng i don't want to like yeah i don't want to risk my games based off you know what's my right back going to do is he going to fly out and give like a free through ball are we going to get a ai interception stuff like that i'd rather be in control of everything you know if i can see the goal it's my fault um and like vice versa if i'm pressing and winning the ball you know it's normally on me and with with how like quick access it is to team pressing this year and how OP that little tactic is, in my opinion, there's no really reason to go like pressure on heavy touch or something like that when you can, you know, go crack press at any any instance in the game. Full width, we kind of want to be compact, you know, we are playing a little bit of a wide formation and I can tell you guys this formation does actually defend a lot like 4-4-2 due to the instructions that we put on and I'll go a bit more into detail in you know, the next few minutes when we get onto the instructions. My depth is on seven and, you know, that's pretty much because I want to win the ball back as high as possible. Um, probably, like, not to my benefit this year, you know, it's really hard to press and get the ball off people. However, you know, I'm not really here to, to watch people play. I want to get the ball much, as much as possible. And, you know, for that reason, if you guys would have seen my team in the start of the video, we have Carl Walker at CB, we have Varane at CB because we're going to be taking a lot of risks. You know, we're going to be jumping past their names and we're going to need to recover. So... For that reason, we're going to need pay CCBs. Um, you guys can definitely like test this out. I'm sure that you can, you know, if you're a bit more of a like, passive defender, you can drop the width down, get maybe a more like solid like CB, like Van Dyke or something like that, rather than a pacey one if you're going to be taking less risks. But um, yeah, it's all play style dependent. You know, me personally, I like to be aggressive, so I'm playing on seven width. Moving on to the offensive side, and I'm sticking with balanced on offense as well. Um, main reason for this is... Um, I haven't actually used possession this year, you know, maybe I should give it a try, experiment a little bit with that, but um, with long ball and fast build up, you know, if, with how strong team pressing is in this game, um, if you're on long ball or fast build up, it's really hard to get out your half when you're getting team pressed, you know, you literally forced to punt the ball, whereas like in balance, you actually do have a chance of kind of playing out from the back, so, you know, for that reason, that's why I'm sticking with balance, my width is on five, um, I don't want to be too wide, you know, as we're playing in like a, a you know a diamond, there's a lot of like quick link up play, so you don't want your players being too far away from each other. Um, even on five whip, we do get we do get like the overloads from um, yeah um, from attacking through the middle where they've just got too many players to defend, so it ends up with your right mid or your left mid just wide open to have like an easy goal or easy cutback or something like that. Players in the boxes on seven, and again, we're working to the matter of this year. Um, this year, RBXs are amazing. So, you know, if you can get as many opportunities to get them in as possible with, you know, a late runner or something like that, then you're going to want to take advantage of that as much as you can. Also, again, starting off, I think I did have this on like four or five, and I was getting in situations where, um, as I mentioned just a second ago, you kind of have overloads with your left mid slash right mid. And 
um, there were some times where my left mid and right mid would kind of just stand still, if you know what I mean. Like they'd be in the open space, um, the overload's there, but instead of like running into the box and like taking, you know, um, the pass on the front foot, they would kind of be standing still. So it kind of forced me to like A pass and, you know, we wouldn't be able to take advantage of the overload that we did have. My corners are both on two and free kicks. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't scored any free kicks this year off like set pieces like crossing, um, only direct ones and corners. Um, I'm still scoring a few corners for how bad I am at them, I'm not going to lie. Um, so I don't feel like you need to go much higher than this. Um, I'm not really getting caught on counter attacks as well from corner, so of course that's a positive as well. So um, yeah, I definitely recommend leaving it on two. Um, no real reason to go much higher. Moving on to the instructions, and we're going to start with a goalkeeper. When you got a player like Nick Pope, that's six foot, whatever he is, massive goalkeeper. You want to get him for comfort crosses, especially with how like strong crosses are this year and even corners. Um, I'm pretty sure with corners, like, you know, when you move your goalkeeper to uh, to kind of like hinder, hinder the chances of getting headed on. Um, I think if you have comfort crosses on, you don't actually have to hold Y. And, you know, sometimes you hold Y, you don't get lock-ons. But I think if you have comfort crosses on, it automatically comes for the crosses. So um, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, I don't have on sweeper keeper, mainly because the goalkeeper I'm using is Nick Pope. He's not really fast, so you know I feel like I might give up goals if I, I do something like that. We're going with the regular stuff for the wing backs. Um, stay back on both players, as you can see right here. Um, no real reason to change that. We got enough width already with the wingers. Um, we got enough players going forward, and you know my wing backs still do join the attack if I trigger them or if I do an LBA pass, something like that. So yeah, no real reason to um, get my wing backs going too far forward. On my CDM, I do have stay back cover centre and the main reason behind this and just this is to avoid being one dimensional. A lot of people like to use cut pass lane on their CDM, but I feel like when you only have one, you kind of need him to just do the basics. And yeah, as long as he's staying central, then like everything else will kind of work itself out. I don't want him like wandering, wandering off or anything like that. On my wingers, I have kind of made some changes from what I used to use last year. Um, last year, the only person that I would put on getting to the box for crosses is CR7 because he was the only one that really scored them. Um, but this year, nah, like I said, with the RBXs, bro, everyone's good at crossing. So get them in the box as much as possible. Hopefully burn the wingbacks back posts. And we have that on both the players, like I said. For defensive support, it's pretty much up to you. Um, for me, it like, depends on your personnel and your play style. If you're someone that likes to manually press, then basic defensive support is, is really good. Obviously, you get to press higher up the field compared to if you have comeback on defense. Um, also, if your team is probably not as good, you know, we haven't got as, like, much stamina, stuff like that, then maybe it's better to just you know, try and be as, as solid defensively as we can and put comeback on our players, um, which I do use on my RTG PS4 account. I also experimented a little bit with um, getting behind on my wingers, but I had an issue, like I said, with the team press. You know, it's really hard to play out from the back, especially if your players are not even, you know, there for for balls to feet. So for that reason, I just um, leave them on basic. And if I need to trigger them, I trigger them. If I need to call them back, I call them back manually. Moving on to my cam. And um, yeah, this is the thing that, in my opinion, kind of really makes the formation as good as it, it actually is. Um, we put comeback on our on defense on our cam and it turns the formation into a 4-4-2 in defense. And you know, if you guys would have uh, you know watched competitive last year, you know a lot of people were using 4-4-2. Um, same for this year. 4-4-2 is really meta, a lot of people using it. And yeah, it's a lot better defensively than the 4-1-2-1-2, I'd probably say. So, you know, you're not really Basically, you have, you have the benefits of a 4-1-2-1-2 in attack, but in defense, you have a 4-4-2. So it makes the formation solid in both aspects and, you know, it's really, really beneficial. The only issue with this is you can't really play with an attacker in the cam spot because they're going to be doing a lot of defensive duties in the central midfield spot. So, you know, for that we for that reason, I'm using Hullet on my main account and on my RTG, I'm using Witzel. I'll go into a few more options for, you know, that type of position at, at the end of the video. I've also, again, been experimenting with a get into box for crosses on my cam um the main reason for this is um sometimes what i'm noticing is when your cam makes a run into the box it kind of pulls the wing back over to your cam for some reason so it leaves them um, the left mid and the right mid wide open in the box um on on the outside so um yeah just trying to get them situations happening as much as possible um that's the reason that we're using that then lastly on the strikers all we have is aggressive interceptions nothing else um i don't want getting behind on i want people to you know be available for feet and then being able to trigger them in behind if needed um i'll be honest i don't know how much aggressive interceptions is doing but again it's like it's kind of leading into my aggressive play style you know i want to win back win the ball back high and with how bad like second man presses i want to get as cracked ai as possible but i'll be honest with you guys man it could be a situation where i'm literally just wasting my player's stamina for no reason um, I'm not actually sure yet, but um, yeah, 
you lot can definitely experiment with that for yourselves, especially if you have players with lower stamina. Right, so I thought the best way to show you guys the type of players that you can use in each position would be to just go to my Road to Glory team, because as I said, it's about 750k squad builder. Um, you know, you're free to go watch my videos if you want to see, like, I'm actually telling the truth. I'm actually using this formation. Um, but yeah, um, this is the team I'm using. Um, pretty standard defence. Um, Klosterman and Mukiel, you know, really cheap. They're coming into the team. Um, Zachariah DM. Type of DM that you want is, for me, preferably a tall one. You know, at least six foot tall. Um, high defending, high physical in my opinion, um, and also really high pace as they're kind of the solo man, especially in transition. Um, so um, yeah, high pace, high defense, high physical, and really tall. For the wingers, it's pretty much the same as you would in any other position. Um, you want really fast, preferably. Um, Jaden Sancho is a real exception because his dribbling is um, absolutely outstanding. You know, one of the best dribblers in the game. So um, yeah, but like other than like you know them peculiar, peculiar situations where like the player's got crazy dribbling plus five star skills um i would definitely just go for more of a speedster on that in that type of position strikers again pretty typical um you want fast you want good shooting preferably um five star weak foot is a bonus five star skills for me is pretty essential um so rashford and dembele are really good cheap options um for me and then the cam position is the one where you kind of have to do some digging to find the type of player that you want in that position. Um, for me, like key attributes are decent shooting. They're going to have a lot of opportunities to score goals. Um, that's why for me, Hullet is absolutely amazing in that position. You know, 100% getting the best out of my Hullet in that position. Um, I should have showed you stats. To be fair, you know we can flick down right now. I'll show you. Look. Okay. 85 gains, 46 goals and 38 assists for uh, a guy that's normally played in like a CDM role in 4 3 run You know, he's never ever getting them stats in a 4 3 run but in 4 one 2 one 2 um, we definitely get the best out of, you know, he's, he's really important stats that aren't really um, used in a 4 3 run So, you know, he's got 87 finishing, 92 shot power, ridiculous stats, um, really good passing, um, decent agility and balance, really good dribbling. Um, so yeah, getting the best out of Hullet in this position, 100%. So yeah, as I was talking about for the cheap alternatives, um, key key attributes, you want decent finishing. Witzel's got that, he's above 80s and everything. Passing's really, really good. 95 short pass, 90 long pass, amazing. Um, perfect for the cam position. Pace is really good and again, really, really important attribute. Um, 80 pace, 83 sprint speed. Um, really, really important. Um, agility and balance is decent. Dribbling, is, again, is decent. Um, pretty good. Not the best, of course, not Hullet level, but it is really, really good and good enough to play in that position. And of course, you know, uh, it's kind of a bonus having good defending. Witzel has it, Hullet has it. Um, there's a lot of guys that do have it, but um, I think you can get away with it if in return you have really good height so for example um, I'm going to show you your card in a minute Taliska the new um, SBC card he has pretty bad defender but he's six foot three so like that automatically gives him you know um, a presence on the field if you know what I mean defensively another thing that is a bit important is stamina um, Witzel only has 83 so I've actually been looking for a kind of guy that I can sub on for Witzel as he gets more tired in the game and I think I'm going to get um, Taliska on my RTG this weekend for a guy that I can sub on and do a job in that position. Few alternatives, as I was saying, for the camp position, um, Taliska, as I mentioned, bro, amazing stats all across the board. Only issue is the defending, but again, like I said, he's six foot three, so um, it kind of does make up for that. Renato Sanchez, another amazing option. Um, decent defending, great dribbling, um, decent passing and shooting, you know, not, not the best. But, you know, you're not really going to get the the perfect guy for, you know, the amount of coins that he does cost. Stamina's amazing, 91, so he could probably last a full game. And, of course, he's got really, really good pace as well. So, um, yeah, really good option in Sanchez. De Bruyne's another good option. Um, he's kind of in the other the other side, like I said, um, in the guy that's more of an offensive option. But he can do a job in, in, in the centre mid position. Not the best defending, but really good stamina. He'll be able to last the whole game. Passing, amazing. Of course, he comes with a five-star weak foot and he's finishing is better than, you know, anyone else that you could probably have here. That is an icon. So, um, yeah, definitely recommend him. And then last option I'm going to give you guys is Nangolan. I'm not sure how much he is now. I think he's around 300k, something like that. But amazing pace, amazing shooting, decent passing. Um, three-star weak foot, I think he still has. Yeah, um, that's a bit of a... 
you know, a bit of a bummer. But um, other than that, you know, his dribbling is good. He feels nice on the ball. Um, he's got decent defending again and 91 stamina, so he'll last a full game. Um, yeah, there's just a few options, you know, you can kind of take from um, the guys I give you, like, and go and find your own, um, your own, like, hidden gem players, you know, there's a few more I could probably think of to my head, like Valverde, like people like that, that could probably play in a position. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully the formation works out for you. Um, make sure you give it a try. It's definitely worth it. If you're someone that likes 4-4-2, um, 4 one 2 one 2 narrow even, you know, them type of formations, then this is a kind of um, just as good alternative. For me, um, it's better. But, you know, for you, you might not find as much success in it. But um, either way, definitely worth a try. If you do end up trying the formation in the weekend league, make sure you let me know in the comments below how the formation is um, faring for you. Hopefully you're having as much success as me. I'm really interested to hear. That's going to be it for me though. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.